and sketch this irregular pentagon out. Now we're told that one of the angles in it is 76 degrees and we want to find the other angles noting that they have to be different, they have to be three digit integers and they have to fit into this grid. So if we just pick a corner we can work out the interior angle sum because you can see there are three triangles inside this pentagon and their interior angles will add up to the interior angles in the pentagon. 3 times 180 which is 540. So if I do 540 minus 76, it's probably best to just do it by hand really. I can minus 40, so it becomes 500 minus 36. It's going to be 464. You can do alter, you, know, you can do column methods if you prefer. Okay, now because all the integers have to have three digits, then they must all start with one. So I can start filling this grid. I've got a one here. Going across and down, I've got a 1 here, going down, and a 1 across here. The rest are, you know, it could be different values at the moment. So I'm going to say that I've got, what should I go with, um, A, B, C, D. And I'm going to call this one X because it's like sort of at the bottom right and it's used for two of them. So what this means, if I write... Um, these numbers in digit form, then I've got 1C1 plus 1DX plus 1AX plus 1B1 equal to 464. But if I minus 400 from both sides, still in digit form, we get C1 plus DX plus AX plus B1 equals 64. Now I'm going to write it in powers of 10 form. For example, 28 can be written as 20 plus 8, or 2 lots of 10 plus 8. So this becomes 10C plus 1 plus 10D plus X, and so on for the rest. Okay, it's looking a bit complicated, but let's continue simplifying it. We can minus 1 and minus 1 to give 62. And then I'm going to factorise out the 10. So I get 10 lots of A plus B plus C plus D plus 2X is equal to 62. And then I can divide through by 2. And we've got a relationship between these five things it is a little bit simpler than what we had at the start. Now we're getting somewhere because the term on the left is a multiple of five and so must end in a zero or a five. Therefore when it equal when it ends in a zero x will equal must end in a one or b1 actually because it's a single digit. In fact this would be when the term that I've highlighted is 30 or if it ends in a five then to get to 1 here, x must be 6, which actually would correspond to this term being 25. So we've got two different cases to look at. Okay, let's take a look at case number 1. x equals 1. Then I can put a 1 here. Note now that a, b, c, d must all be different because otherwise if some of them were the same, I would get two of the same angle. Well, we can see that in the case, we're going to get five lots of A plus B plus C plus D equaling 30, and therefore A plus B plus C plus D must equal six. Because they're all different, then we cannot avoid having 0, 1, 2, and 3. Because you can't have any bigger numbers because the total would then be more than 6. So we're looking at all the different ways to arrange these digits. And it turns out when you have four objects that are different and you want to know how many different ways there are to re rearrange them, it's actually 4 factorial. This comes from 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So there are 24 arrangements when x is equal to 1. Here's one way to think about it. We have four things. Now we want to put the first one down. 
there's going to be four possibilities. I can either put the zero or the one or the two or the three. I then can't repeat them. So for the second one, there's only going to be three possibilities. Maybe I put the three down. And then two possibilities, the one or the two. So maybe I put one down and I have to put the two as the last one. Remember, these are the middle digits of the, of the whole numbers. So I'm going to get 101, 102. Oh, sorry, I forgot about, uh, um, no, sorry, not 102. 101, 112, 122, and 132 in some order. But the key thing is there's going to be 24 ways. Let's take a look at case two. And remember, this was x equaling 6. Note, first of all, that we can have um, some of them different. We just cannot have c equal to b, and we can't have a equal to d, because otherwise you get the same number. So looking at the equation above again, now we would subtract 6, so we'd get 5 lots of a plus b plus c plus d equaling 25, which means a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 5. So we're not allowed to have three things the same, because then we'd either have c equal to b or a equal to d, but we can have two things the same, so add to 5. So we could have 0 and 0 and then 1 and 4. Or we can have 0 and 0 and 2 and 3. And that's the only way to do it with, with two zeros. What if we have, remember, we can't have them all different now because then they would add to 6. So we're going to have to have uh, two of them the same, in fact. 1 and 1 would get me to 2. And then I could have 0 and 3. That's the only way that I could get 5 using two 1s with only, yeah, with, with the others not being the same. And then could I have 2 and 2? Yes, if I go with 0 and 1. So these these little four collections, four, you know, four ways to do it. Um, and we've got to think, so we can just look at one of them. We can look at a, oh no, sorry, I'll just, I'll just maybe pick uh, 0, 0, 1, 4. Now here, there are four times three times two times one ways of ordering it, but every time we order it, we could swap the zeros around. Like So this treats them as being different, but if I treat them the same, which they are, we need to actually divide by two, because otherwise we've double counted them. For example, in my previous one, I could swap the zero and the one around, and that would be a new one, but if I swap the, two, the zero and the zero around, you wouldn't get a new possibility. And that actually works in general. If you want to know how many different ways to arrange the letters in the word banana, it's actually 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But then I would divide by 2, or 2 factorial, same thing, for the ends, because I could swap the ends around. But then I could also rearrange the a's in lots of different ways. I would actually divide by 3 factorial. This is a general rule. I'm not really going to go into any more detail on it, but it's, it's good to know for these sorts of questions. So there are 12 ways to arrange this. I'm going to be really careful now though and, and write them down I think. There is a, qu a quicker way to do it but I just want to be super careful. So let's say we've got A, B, C, D because you must remember we're not allowed to have A equal to B. So 0, 0, 1, 4 I would actually rule out and 0, 0, 4, 1 I would actually rule out. And then 1, 4, 0, 0, I would rule out. And 4, 1, 0, 0, I would rule out. I'm going to write the others down in a minute, but actually this was my, this is the main point I wanted to make. So I'm going to reject, reject four of the ways. So eight are allowed. Now remember, that was just for my 0, 0, 1, 4. I've got four ways to do this. And so overall, we have 
4 times 8 equals 32 arrangements. For case 2, and therefore the total will equal that 24 from case 1 plus 32 from case 2, 56 is our answer. Wow, incredible question. I'm just going to write down the other, the eight possibilities just to show you that they're okay. So let's just put a line under these. So we could have zero. I'm going to, I've had zero as the first two. I've had zero as the last two. I just need to look at the other zeros. So I could have zero, four, zero, one, and then swap the one and the four around. That would be okay. I could have zero, um, four, one, zero, and zero, one, four, one. Or let's not have the first one as zero. Let's go with something else. So I could have a zero here and a zero here. That would be okay. Or I could swap them around, the four and the one. Or I could have a uh, zero here, but then this is one. And zero. See, as long as I don't have these two the same or these two the same, I'm okay. And then one, zero, four, one. And these are our eight that are okay. So then we could just put them in. Don't forget, we've got this grid. So, you know, one possibility would be zero, four, one, zero. So I could make this zero. Uh, I could make this four, this zero, and this one. And that would be one option. But that's what we've been talking about, all the different ways to then arrange these. So I kind of moved away from the grid and just did it, you know, um, a bit more abstractly, but with, remember it does relate to this grid. Okay, that is a long solution. Thanks for watching this video and well done your efforts on this question. It's a really good one.